You never want to preempt the governor, right? But, uh, you know, last night Minnesota took a large step forward, and, and I think the message from Minnesotans was pretty clear. Uh, they want this rigidity and this unwillingness to compromise uh, to be put on the shelf and to work for uh, a Minnesota that's uh, creating jobs, uh, more competitive, provides a good quality education, quit borrowing uh, from our schools, reform state government so that it works better, and then balance the state budget in an honest, fair, equitable way. And uh, we're very, in the state senate, very humbled by the support that Minnesotans uh, showed us last night. And uh, I, uh, I did reach out uh, to the State Chamber of Commerce today uh, and spoke with uh, the president, even though uh, they sent a lot of literature out against my candidates, uh, because uh, we do intend to engage the business community in that conversation here at the Capitol. And I look forward to working with them, uh, with the governor and the House, uh, to move Minnesota forward. Ditto. How about that? Um, so uh, I, I do think as well that the that the the message coming out of, of this election is that people are interested in in progress uh, in moving the state forward and taking on the challenges that we have in a kind of practical roll up your sleeves way uh, and moving away from the the roadblocks roadblocks and the gridlock that we that we've seen and uh, that I think will be our first and foremost uh, commitment as we move forward here. Uh, you know, we do have some big challenges that we have to take on. Uh, the budget deficit uh, is, uh, remains uh, a challenge that we have to solve, uh, but also investments in education and making sure we're, we're providing opportunity uh, as this economy starts to recover, uh, that, the, uh, that we grow it, uh, you know, as President Obama said, from the middle out and the, uh, and the bottom up instead of from the top down. And, and uh, we want to make sure that, that we're providing opportunities for middle-class Minnesotan uh, families uh, to prosper and thrive uh, as the economy continues to prosper and thrive. And um, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward uh, to taking on these challenges. And I know a lot of uh, my new members are really excited to, to get here as well and take on some of these challenges. And um, uh, I do also want to say uh, it was, um, uh, you know, the speaker did, did call last night, uh, and I thought uh, that was very, very uh, generous and, and um, uh, honorable of him to do so, and I, I look forward uh, to uh, to working uh, with him uh, and uh, the other Republicans as as we move forward here as well. So thank you. Well, ditto too. <coughs> uh, I want to thank the people of Minnesota who gave us uh, yesterday the opportunity to to lead the state forward together. I was asked uh, many times what would happen with the DFL governor and the DFL legislature, and I said, progress. And that's our responsibility now. It's a major responsibility, as others have noted. We face some very significant challenges. This is a, I hope the President will make clear to the American people that we are in a very challenging era now, a new era that's going to make uh, global competition, that's going to make our economic progress far more difficult to come by than it has over the previous half century. And Minnesota will inevitably be affected by that like everyone else. So it's going to be a, a very challenging time to, to govern and to get to achieve the kind of successes that Minnesotans have a right to expect from, from those who are in positions of responsibility. But uh, I think we'll be up to that challenge. I look forward to working with Republicans as well as uh, Democrats in the Minnesota legislature, working with the business community as well as labor and everyone else. Uh, this is the time for all of us to pull together and say we're all Minnesotans. And we're not partisans. We're patriots. And we're going to work together to uh, do what Minnesotans need, which is to improve this state. We've got to respond to questions. So the three of you all on the same page? Uh, well, I, I sound... I, Sounded that way, pretty much that way to me. Are we on the same page? Sure. Yes. So, 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 so we can expect total agreement all the time. Well, okay. <laughs> you won't have anything to write about the whole the whole fight. <laughs> sure. It would be a little presumptuous. Uh, uh, the Senate DFL is caucusing tomorrow. 
the Senate DFL will caucus tomorrow uh, at noon to elect uh, new leadership. We are going to go back to uh, the previous precedent in the Senate that the Republicans deviated from, and that is we will elect a tax chair of the state Senate. We will elect a finance chair of the state Senate. That's how it previously was uh, under uh, Democratic control for the last few decades at least. Uh, so uh, I don't know if I will prevail as the majority leader. I know there is a contest for the tax chair for certain and for the assistant leader. Uh, so exactly what the leadership team in the Senate uh, is going to look like, uh, we, that table's not set yet. Well, and you are running. The outgoing House Speaker and Majority Leader said just a short time ago that what Minnesota voters can actually expect is higher taxes and more big government. Well, I, I think the, the time for that kind of campaign rhetoric is concluded yesterday with the elections uh, that were held. And, you know, I was very impressed last night with what uh, Governor Romney said in his uh, concession speech. And I quote a bit of it here. He said, the nation, as you know, is at a critical point. At a time like this, we can't risk partisan bickering and political posturing. Our leaders have to reach across the aisle to do the people's work. And we citizens also have to rise to the occasion. Uh, that's as well said as it could be. And uh, I would uh, apply that uh, adage to uh, everyone in Minnesota as well. Governor, does that mean you aren't going to propose tax increases or, or more government regulation? You know, we've calculated, in their give or take one or two, there are over 51 members of the legislature, both parties, House and Senate, who are, who are going to be brand new. That's over a quarter of the legislature. So, uh, you know, I, I, my assumption is that these two can confirm or not, but is that the, all four caucuses are going to need some time to come together to talk over what, among themselves what their priorities are, what their, their uh, initiatives are, and then for, you know, my administration to engage in conversation with all four caucuses. And, you know, out of that process, and we wait for a budget forecast the uh, first week in December. And out of that process will come, you know, the, you know laying down the, the initial template, and then, of course, we have five months where that will change as well. So, I mean, that's the process I see a uh, line ahead of us, and it's, you're asking for conclusions now uh, when we haven't really begun the, uh, the prelude yet. Well, to, Pat, to, Pat's, uh, to, to Pat's question, relative to the Republicans in the Senate, at least, uh, I had a very, very good conversation with Senator Sengem last night about uh, a little before two in the morning, a uh, very, very good conciliatory uh, conversation. Uh, not surprising, he's that kind of a guy. And uh, uh, Senator Ortman did reach out to me uh, today and left me a voicemail. I haven't had the opportunity to call her back yet, but I certainly will. I, I think the Republicans in the Senate understand. The criticism that I made of them over the last couple years was they never left the campaign trail. They stayed on the campaign trail, on the campaign message throughout their two years in the majority in the Senate. And I think they've learned a lesson from that. I do hope that the House Republicans uh, will, will learn that lesson also. It is time to leave the campaign behind. The election is over. Let's all roll up our sleeves and do uh, what's good for our state. I think that's what the citizens uh, that voted yesterday expect us to do. Said he's going to bring up a uh, bill to legalize gay marriage in the next session. Is that an effort you would support? Same question for Representative Thiessen and for gov the governor. Uh, I think anybody that had, has policy ideas need to find a way to put them on the back shelf right now. This state has serious financial challenges. Uh, going back to 2002, we've never resolved the state's structural budget challenges. Uh, that's going to require a very difficult conversation about additional spending reductions uh, and tax reform. And I think any policy considerations are going to be secondary to the budget and tax reform. You know, so I obviously was very happy with the result of last night's uh, vote on the, uh, on the constitutional amendment. I thought it was the right thing for the state of Minnesota. Um, and the, that uh, vote, I think, and the result of the, the result that came on that vote was the result of a long conversation that Minnesotans had uh, over the last year and a half. Uh, and I think we need to kind of let that settle in and understand what that means, uh, what that vote means, and then continue to have conversations about the you know future directions of that. But it's a discussion we need to have not just here at the legislature, but 
um, but more broadly as a, as, a, as a state, as a community. Uh, and I expect that that conversation is absolutely going to continue, and uh, the legislature will be part of that. I'd say basically the same. I think it's, uh, I'd say the same about any other issue that uh, you ask about, which is what I said earlier, that you got four new caucuses that they're going to need a chance to talk among themselves, and we're going to need a chance to talk with them before we formulate uh, what our policies will be or won't be. So you know, this is the beginning of the process, and that will certainly, uh, you know, applies to everything. Bill, legalizing gay marriage ended up on your desk. Would you sign it? You know, again, I'm not going to get into this particular or that particular. You know, we just had an election yesterday. I think it's time for everybody to catch their breath, to reflect on what that, uh, the meaning of that election is, what the voters want from the people of, of they've elected. And, and I think it's more than anything that we work cooperatively and constructively together. We'll have our honest dis disagreements. That's democracy but that we're working in a constructive, cooperative way. And that's where my focus is going to be. I left a call for Speaker Zellers on his uh, left a voicemail message after I heard his uh, decision. And I would do the same for Senator Senjum, depending on the circumstances. And, you know, we'll reach across to the leaders of the uh, new leaders of the Senate caucus uh, and uh, uh, Republican caucus and the House Republican caucus and, and hope that we can build good working relationships. And that, that's my priority. Governor, are, are, Governor, Governor, are tax increases? Same sex you said before that you support tax increases on the wealthy, but you're not saying either of those two things today. Why is that? Well, uh, because again, I once I <laughs> once I step over that line and into this policy and that, I mean there are probably you know 40 or 50 different policies that people are going to want to know what my position is today, and and I just that's to me con contradicts what 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 I think the proper you know approach to this matter is and. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll say on the, the tax one, I mean, for me, that's not a slogan, that's a conviction. You know, I, I, I started my campaign for governor f almost four years ago saying what the facts are. Uh, according to the Minnesota Department of Revenue, under then Governor Plenty, which was that, uh, you know, the top 10 percent, 5 percent, 1 percent of pe the m m people in the Minnesota income level don't pay uh, as high a percentage of their income in state and local taxes as, as middle income taxpayers. That was the basic, uh, you know, thesis of my campaign, and you know, it's it's a conviction. But how to how I'll approach that, uh, you know, is something I haven't yet concluded. Talking with Commissioner uh, France and and others, and you know, and then we'll have to see what the legislature's willingness, is. and uh, particularly we'll have to look at it in the context of the budget forecast. You know, if the budget forecast, I don't expect this, you know, shows us with this, you know, massive surplus. That puts it in one context. If it shows us with a significant deficit, then we're going to have to look at everybody, whether you raise any revenues or whether you cut the spending even more drastically than was done two years ago. So, I mean, that, that's the context in which we'll have to make those assessments. Senator Bob, did voters tell you that taxes need to go up? Is that part of the message that you heard on Election Day? Uh, I, I felt a lot of angst out on the campaign trail uh, in talking to candidates that were door knocking about the increasing property taxes, the growing reliance on property taxes to fund schools, the inequities that that creates. And I did ask the President of the Chamber today uh, to please come with some recommendations to the legislature. I really want to engage the business community in a tax reform discussion. And clearly, uh, last session, they spoke pretty loud and clear that, that the business community is getting very concerned about uh, the rising property taxes in this state. So I think uh, all of the pieces of the, of, of the Minnesota revenue system are going to be on the table. I look forward to having that conversation uh, with the business community. Because at the end of the day, uh, we need to make sure that Minnesota has a strong, vibrant business community that's growing jobs and any kind of tax reform that needs to be our, our, our major consideration, that we don't do anything to damage you know, a very fragile economic recovery. But clearly, uh, there's a lot of angst on the part of property, uh, property pay, taxpayers. We have time for just one more question. It's a two-part question. <laughs> first, first, first of all... I'm only going to answer. Taking offers for the second yeah. First of all, uh, just, are you running for speaker? And if so, well... Um, well, why don't you do that, and then we'll go to the second part. Yes. Yes? Do you know of any competition? Uh, not that I'm aware okay. of right now. Yeah. 
And that's tomorrow night for folks at 7 Tomorrow yeah. night? Yeah. Um, do you, or, and I forgot the second part, so you better let somebody else ask the question. <laughs> well, is there one more question? Do you think the constitutional amendment was held here last night? Uh, uh, well, uh, yes, I do. I, I think it turned out, um, I, I think it turned out uh, a number of, vo of you know, our base voters. I also think that the discussion around the constitutional amendments, and not even necessarily the substance, although that, but also just the idea of legislating through the Constitution, uh, um, made a lot of uh, independent and moderate voters uh, uh, question kind of the direction that we're going in the state over the last two years. And uh, I imagine that some of them voted for Democrats partly because of that. Governor, Governor one, one more quick one. Just, 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 just perspective, this will be the first time in 22 years that Democrats have controlled both houses of the legislature and the governorship. You worked in the Perkins administration under similar situation. What do you, what the historic, what's your historic perspective? Well, I, I look back and to when Governor Perkins took office uh, for the beginning of that second term in January of 1983, and country was coming out of a recession, but if you look at the next eight years, uh, we we're in a period of sustained ec economic growth. Businesses did well. It addressed some of the major business concerns. Uh, workers' comp rates was one of the top ones back then. Uh, you know, funded education, I think it was uh, all in all a very successful eight years for Governor Perpich, but more importantly for the people of Minnesota, and that will be our goal to achieve that again. Governor, but should Minnesotans expect the three of you to agree on everything? Those perpetu years weren't all sweetness and light with his DFL legislature. <laughs> no, I, I mean, that's not the process. The process is a, you know, an exchange of ideas and ideologies and different, uh, you know, geographic uh, representation. All I mean, that, that's democracy. Uh, someone once said, you know, that's the noise of democracy is, is the disagreement. That, uh, But at the end of the day, you know, we need to pull together and work together. And I don't foresee the kind of this absolute standoff, my way or no way, kind of, you know, the, to characterize, say, the lead into the shutdown. But, you know, I, well, that doesn't mean we won't uh, disagree. It just means that we recognize we have a responsibility at the end to pull it together and move ahead. Representative, just one more question. This is all part of an eight-part question. <laughs> Are you concerned at all about all the wave elections we've been having in recent years, really dating back to 2002, how it seems like two to four years uh, something changes? Are you concerned about that, and what do you plan to do to try to keep the majority longer than two years? Um, you know, the election was just yesterday. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, I, I think what the people of Minnesota want and what they should expect of us uh, is that we govern effectively and that we focus on the right things, we focus on the basics. Uh, that's what we intend to do, and I think if, if we do that, uh, we'll be successful. But more important than just thinking about whether we can get reelected next year, I think if we focus on governing well, uh, that result will take care of itself. Thank you all very much. Thank you.